So welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2's Our Community Counts video for classifying liabilities. In this quick video, we're going to be talking about the Government of Canada and contingent liabilities that appear on the balance sheet of the federal government. This is a quote from Ron Morris, who's a managing partner at a law firm, a local law firm that represents Indigenous groups across Canada. He's saying, it does seem to me that this is probably a very unrealistic assessment of what their contingent liability might look like. It's growing and it's silently chipping away and creating a massive debt that at some point we need to come to terms with. So in 2017, the Canadian federal government released financial statements as usual. Unsurprisingly, just like a private corporation, of course, we know that they must detail the government's contingent liabilities when they're prepared, and that a significant amount of effort goes into preparing and ensuring that all of the individual figures um, are as close to accurate and faithful as possible. However, during the preparation of these, uh, the, the balance sheet, the contingent liability section in its preparation, uh, that section is noted to continuously be growing as Ottawa estimates and subsequently re-estimates the likelihood of payout and the number of sources of contingent loss. This, as we've learned, is an important part of reporting under either IFRS or ASPE, which is estimating the likelihood of a potential loss due to a scenario that contains a contingency and then reporting based upon established rules. However, there's a considerable amount of leeway typically um, when, when accountants are making these estimates. So for the government within these liabilities, there's $20 billion specifically set aside to cover 70 outstanding comprehensive Indigenous land claims, 528 smaller claims, and then thousands of more individual claims, including some that are related to the legacy of residential schools. However, there's a problem. Lawyers that work with Indigenous communities have commented that the estimate is too low and that the true amount that's owed to Indigenous communities for historical wrongs is likely several times as high. So this begs the question, as accountants, one of our most important principles is that of faithful representation. Statements should always be produced in a way that faithfully reflects the condition of the entity in question. So is it possible for an estimate to be biased in a way that disadvantages a particular group? Well, people often say numbers don't lie, but I would argue that in this instance, it's possible for an estimate like that to lie. Is it possible that the government of Canada is trying to make that number a little bit lower for political purposes so that net debt figures appear better and at the expense of a particularly disadvantaged group? I think that it's entirely possible. So we must remind ourselves continuously that it is important when making estimates to consider all individuals and stakeholders, and in this case, rights holders that are impacted by them and attempt to be as faithful as possible. If you'd like, uh, if you'd like to know a little bit more, that there's a, a link to the mass media publication about this uh, at, in the final slide, but I'll finish here with a bit of a quote. The sooner you get the liabilities off Canada's books, the sooner you're gonna have positive economic growth within Canada's economy because First Nations people will have access to capital. One of the biggest challenges for First Nations people is lack of access to capital. This is Perry Bellegarde, National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations.